You're listening to Tim Bulkley's 5-Minute Bible. In this third part of my series on Biblical Complaints, I'm going to look for a clue in Jeremiah to that sudden change in mood and tone we found in Psalm 22. The book of Jeremiah is full of complaints. There are quite a number of passages in the book that look like the laments in Psalms, as we've noticed since Baumgartner. But their use in prophecy, or the use of this genre in prophecy, means there are some differences. And I think those differences supply a clue to what's missing in Psalm 22 verses 21 to 22 and explain that sudden change of attitude and tone. Some of the passages in Jeremiah that are like the Psalms are clumped together in a group called the Confessions of Jeremiah. I've discussed that title Confessions elsewhere so I won't deal with it now. Together they tell the story, I argue, of a relationship of Jeremiah and his God. And as you read them you can't miss that these complaints come in the context of a dialogue or debate. They're in a relational context. It's especially clear in the first two or three of them. In Jeremiah 11, 18 through to 12, 6 and 15, 10 to 21. And in those places we hear God respond to Jeremiah's complaints. Jeremiah 11, 20. But you, O Lord of hosts, who judge righteously, who try the heart and the mind, let me see your retribution upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. The complaint, by implication that God is not acting as he should, verse 21. Therefore, thus says the Lord concerning the people of Anatoth, who seek your life, and say, You shall not prophesy in the name of the Lord, or you will die by our hand, and so on. God replies to Jeremiah's complaint in Jeremiah 11. But God also responds a second time in chapter 12. Verse 3 But you, O Lord, know me, you see me and test me, my heart is with you, pull them out. How long? Verse 4 The people said, He's blind to our ways. Is responded to in verse 5 If you race with foot runners and they've wearied you, how will you compete with horses? And if in a safe land you fall down, how will you fare in the thickets of Jordan? It may not be the response Jeremiah wants, but it's a clear response to his complaint. Toughen up, Jerry. Or in chapter 15, verse 15, O oh Lord, you know, remember me and visit me and bring down retribution. I did not sit in the company of merrymakers, nor, verse 18, why, truly, you are to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail. The complaint could hardly be stronger. The response comes in verse 19. Therefore, thus says the Lord, If you turn back, I will take you back, and you shall stand before me. If you utter what's precious and not what's worthless, you shall serve as my mouth. It is they who will turn to you, not you who will turn to them. So again, toughen up, Jerry, but this time, do your job. Each time, God is responding to Jeremiah's complaint. And that, I think, is the secret of complaints. Complaint is just one side of a conversation. We hope it's like that when we complain to a company complaints department, though very often it's not. And what we get in a psalm of complaint is only part of that side. Or the complaint part of a psalm of complaint is only part of that side. And that's true in Jeremiah and Job as well as in Psalms. But it's perhaps most clear in Psalms. Because the complaint psalms, as I call them, are full also of thanksgiving, hope, trust and confession. The reason I call them complaint psalms is because you can find all those things elsewhere. Complaint is the element which is unique to them and characteristic of them. Confession is of both sorts. Both I've done wrong, but also sometimes you are great and loving. Confession in both senses of the word. But you see, if it's a conversation, there's another side to the conversation, one that we don't hear in the book of Psalms, but we do hear in Jeremiah. God responds to the complaints. It's just that, as in Jeremiah so strongly and clearly, the response is not always what we would like.